morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Tuesday, July 10th. And uh, a lot of nothing yesterday. We did really absolutely nothing. We had an inside day from um, from Friday. And um, it's going to be uh, uh, interesting to see really what happens next. Um, econ data is kind of light today. We actually don't have any econ data. So um, it's all going to be about any news that comes out or, um, or just basically trading technicals today. Um, Yesterday uh, we had a benign day. We were just uh, basically chopping around inside here, and you could see this from uh, from Friday, as you can see the big drop down, and we had an inside day digest in this move. Um, I will tell you that uh, China continues to slow. Uh, we had they had some uh, economic data last night. We are uh, right now. It's early morning Tuesday, and um, futures were down about four and a half, and they actually rallied to be up two and a half. So. Um, interesting note uh, to take note of. I do see the um, at the end of the day we've always been getting a little bit of a bounce, a little rally off the lows. But um, I mentioned about the McClellan oscillator last week. Be careful, use caution if you're swing trading. Um, we had uh, a nice little sell off, probably about 30 handles off when we uh, when we realized McClellan was way overbought. So that ended up being a nice trade if you entered short. Um, where we go from here, uh, it's going to be. Uh, really interesting to see we have market divergence and that's what this video is basically called today market divergence um, on a lot of sectors and I put some uh, charts together to show you and I want to kind of jump right into it uh, we did start earning seasons real quick uh, with Alcoa they uh, had a slight beat last night um, where AMD actually uh, warned uh, that they're going to be missing guidance so they got hit last night uh, so semis not looking too good um, in the overall picture and I want to kind of get right into it so let's let's take a look at the charts here um, first let's look at our momentum indicator our bar chart momentum indicator really not saying that we're basically neutral here um, anything below this 98 98.50 uh, puts us in an over um, oversold and a way up in here is overboard and as you can see here when we had this uh, big pop up we sold off the next day so really not telling us much um, that we wanted that we really looking to save but let's take a look at our um, our indicators now this is what's concerning. These are these are some big red flags here. Now, as you know, copper, um, a big industrial metal, um, usually uh, specifies, and copper is usually a big leader in the. Uh, if the copper, if copper is, is um, a trading higher, the S and P will follow. And as you can see, we have divergence. We have S and P made a higher high from this area here back in June, early June, uh, where we did not hear. We actually uh, popped up, and then we actually sold off again where S&P did not. And if you look at our ratio chart here, um, there's no momentum in this uh, in copper. So big red flag, very concerning, um, something that we really need to keep an eye on. Now, can divergence uh, work itself out? Absolutely. But we want to make sure um, if you're taking swing trades, not as much day trades, but it's nice to know that you want to follow the trend. Uh, but if you're swing trading, and there's a lot of guys that follow me about uh, that they do swing trade, uh, you got to use caution here if you're looking to get long. S&P up in here, as you can see, look at the transports. Clear leader, and it's lagging. Double top, never really made new highs from this area back in June 18th. And look what happened here. S&P made a higher high from the June 18th high, but the transports didn't. Impossible for the S&P to continue to rally if the transports continue to lag. Um, and that's that's a known fact and you, you're gonna have other key sectors here that are not uh, following suit it's just impossible for the S&P to rally alone and as you can see here our ratio chart S&P to transportations clearly lagging here big warning sign especially the transports um, really need to see the transports rally um, or, or at least start to pick up if we're gonna have additional market movement um, semiconductors same thing double top no new highs sold right off um, S and P and the and the uh, ratio chart with the um, semiconductors sitting right up in this area here, a little bit more constructive. But if you look at this area here, higher high from this area, double top did not make a new high. Again, semis need to rally along with the transportation sector. And let's go into the banks. If banks having big trouble, if you can see here this ratio chart. Drew a line, a little horizontal line here. We had our um, ratio did break out, but lagging. Uh, did lag. We did break a little higher, okay, but we sold right off again. We sold off harder than it sell off in the S&P. So um, clear, clear divergence. Um, we have market divergence in place. Now, 
we need a catalyst to move, make this market move. Now, the charts don't look bad um, from Friday, and, and you know, still plenty of time to recoup, but I do see um, caution ahead. And we are going to come into some, some um, weakness, and I mentioned about the seasonal tendencies right now on uh, the next couple of weeks. So that doesn't mean that we're going to fall straight down. Um, if we do get some sort of a pullback, which we are uh, actually uh, in a process of getting right now, and if the volume stays low, it'll be constructive, um, and I think that pullback will be bought um, going into the end of the summer. But again, anything can happen. Uh, news can trump the charts, and it's something that really uh, we need to pay attention to. Uh, even if you're day trading during the day, if you're trading, if you're trading the markets itself, you really need to see wh where the trend is. So let's dive right into the charts today. And uh, S and P, the spiders. I like to look at the spiders with volume. We had basically an up down day. You can see we have two small little doji's indecision. We are above the 50, the 20, and the 200, okay? So that still is a, is a positive. Volume light yesterday, also a positive. Um, of course, Friday we had our big down day, so we had a heavier volume. So we had some distribution days here. Love to see some green bars with some heavier volume come in in the next few days. Now, um, we're still overbought in our stochastics. MACD's a little bit overbought in this area here. So I'd like to see maybe a little more pullback, maybe into that 133 and a half area, and then make a move to the upside. Now you see we have this, I drew this channel, we have an upward channel here. So if we could stay in this channel and just continue to move higher, then I see maybe a possible test of these highs back in this uh, 142 area. Um, S&P 60 minute. Now this is why, this is, a, a, this is a, 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 a bullish pattern here, as you know. We had our inverted head and shoulders, we did break above the neckline, and we're staying above the neckline. So. Um, this is still bullish, and we like to see the stochastic start to turn back up again and the MACD start to curl. So as of right now, we're hanging in there. Um, I'd like to see a, a, a nice big move higher, possibly a gap fill up in this area in a 60-minute chart, and then hit that move. When I, do, I think once we do hit that target at 138.78, 139 area, um, I think the market will then give us one more pullback before a nice rally into the end of the year. Um, I'm sorry, the end of the summer. Okay, um, transportation sector, and same thing, basically charts are basically the same here, um, holding above the 20, the 50, and the 200 day, very constructive, um, we are not overbought in this area as far as price, stochastics are showing that we're overbought, we're starting to curl down a little bit, so again, a move back lower on low volume, a couple of small consolidation days even right up in this area here. Um, and then a breakout higher, test these areas here, will be constructive for the markets. But again, we have the market divergence, so it's something that we really need to pay attention to, guys. Um, that's a big warning flag. Now, again, right now, charts are okay. They're not bad from Friday. Um, but if we can, we can maintain above these moving averages, then I think that we have something uh, um, bigger, the bigger picture. Uh, now, the last thing I want to just take note of is the, um, is the dollar. The dollar actually rallied pretty hard yesterday, and it's something else that I want to uh, make note of that we need to really pay attention to. If the dollar does rally, then we're going to put continued pressure on equities and commodities, and that's going to be the variable here, what the dollar, dollar's doing. The dollar actually has a big bull flag. Um, I couldn't get the dollar chart up. There's something wrong with the uh, with stock charts um, with the dollar, but I just want to make note there is a bull flag that we could move higher. If the dollar, dollar continues to test these areas and breaks out higher, then uh, then I think the markets will give us that little sell-off that we're looking for and then a possible rally at the end of the summer. Okay? All right, guys, let's see what happens today. Uh, no economic data today, so um, anything can happen. Just please be on your turf. Stay, st stay alert, and um, please use the stop. Stops are your best friend. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.